right now? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Sorry, everybody that's tuning in. I think we got it. And I'm going to play now, right from the beginning. Hello, I'm Audrey Rowan, and my capstone project was exploring filmmaking. Since I was a kid, I've been infatuated with making little movies on my phone. When I was younger, I'd make them with my friend and videotape our Lego characters. And as I grew older, I'd make vines, TikToks, and clips about stuff like hockey or school to make my friends laugh. When I was given the option to work on a capstone, I knew I had to make it about film. I've never known what career I want to pursue, so I figured I could use Capstone to see what film is all about. Originally, I decided to make two films that were high quality and seemed natural. When I say natural, I mean that I wanted to make them flow, just like how, we, just like how you would go to the movie theater and get sucked into a two hour long movie. There were no distractions, like unusual camera angles or bad quality. The overall goal of any film is to let the audience forget about the fact that they're watching a movie. The cuts between scenes and camera movement make a production flow softly. The first film would be like a movie, with a script and actors. The second movie was going to be a documentary exploring the lives and passions of GHS students. The reason why I was going to make two films was because I wanted to explore two different types of filmmaking. So I had my goal. Now where do I start? First, I needed the tools to make it. The basic tools needed to make a film are a microphone, a tripod, and a camera, obviously. There are also more advanced items that are used professionally, such as lights, a camera stabilizer, and camera filters. Thankfully, the high school provided me with everything I needed. I realized that there were a ton of important factors in achieving that cinematic look. You may not realize it, but lighting has a drastic effect on mood and aesthetic. There are different types of lighting that are used to achieve the right feeling, tone, and mood in a scene. For example, a backlight is used to separate the background from the actor, and it defines the actor. A fill light can be used to remove shadows, and a key light is the main light that highlights an actor. There are also different camera movement techniques that can be used to show the feelings of a character or situation. The vertigo effect is when you move the camera forward while zooming out. It can be used to portray surprise, suspense, or realization. The rack zoom is when the camera changes focus to something else. It lets the audience become aware of something like someone creeping behind a character. What I needed next was a storyline for the first film. I'm going to be honest and say that at first I had no clue what story I was going to make. Something that interested me though was the idea of making a science fiction film. Somebody that I turned to for ideas was my dad, who loves sci-fi. We brainstormed and he helped me come up with a futuristic plot that would make my production intriguing. In December, I ended up writing the script which was much more challenging than I expected. It took me a whole month because I found myself trying to figure out how to film a car crash with no budget. My mentor, Erica Edwards, was able to give me a lot of helpful advice on how to shoot it. Here are some examples she gave me on shooting scenes in a car. Erica went to college as a theater major, but later on decided that she wanted to pursue film. She now is the creative media director for Honeyhead Film Productions, which you should definitely check out. I've learned a lot of great things from her, like how to shoot creatively, how to make my film unique, and a lot of technical things. I also watched some movies for inspiration, including Jordan Peele's Get Out, Christopher Nolan's Inception, and Lana and Lily Wachowski's The Matrix. But one movie that I really want to mention in this presentation is Inception. It's a very well-made movie with complex characters and a complicated plot. It catches your interest immediately. The movie features many notable actors, including Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Hardy, Ellen Page, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. The movie was shot in a multitude of locations, including Tokyo, Morocco, England and Los Angeles. It's about going into other people's dreams and stealing secrets. I really admired the complexity of the movie 
and the fact that Nolan could pull off such a crazy idea. Visual effects played a huge part in this movie. In dreams, anything can happen, so of, so of course in Inception, wild things happen. There are multiple scenes that bend reality. For example, there is a hotel hallway fight scene that was shot in a rotating set. The hallways rotated while the actors fought because in the dream level before, the characters were asleep in a van that was tumbling over and over. There were also scenes where buildings had to bend or fruit-filled crates exploded in zero gravity. If one was submerged in water while dreaming, the building would flood with water in their dream. There were so many parallels, metaphors, and symbolism incorporated into the movie, but I can't spoil it. If you appreciate creativity, this movie is something you definitely want to watch. It'll make you question your reality and the world around you. What I did next was I borrowed a camera from the school and started filming things randomly and playing with zoom, pans, and cuts. This was in February, by the way. This way, I could film some things with a real camera and be able to edit them for practice. Here's some of the footage I got. In the midst of all this, I had been looking around for actors and extras. The main character was going to be Christina Meadows, who lives in Meriden, and I had found some people who were willing to be my extras who would sit around in offices or walk by in shots. Now this is where things got very difficult because I had to change my project. The weekend I had scheduled for the first part of shooting was the weekend that school was canceled due to the pandemic. This meant that literally everything I'd been planning in the first half of the capstone wouldn't be seen in effect. No camera, no cast because of social distancing. I was disappointed but glad I was able to do all the research. I couldn't borrow the professional camera from the school, so the entire goal of making a professional looking film was scrapped. But now that you all know that I couldn't make that film, I can tell you what it was going to be about, which will be kind of hard to explain because I don't have too many visuals to show because obviously I didn't shoot. But anyways, it was a young girl writer's 16th birthday. It's a special day because something is going to happen that will change her life. The film takes place in 2041 in a world where chips can be implanted into the brain to change the way that the brain thinks and processes information. At age 16, the government requires one to choose whether or not to get the implant, but there's a twist. Getting the implant causes the cells in the brain to rapidly age due to the new speed at which the brain is working at. This means that if you get the implant, you will die around the age of 40. It's a hard choice to make. You'll be so much smarter and can actually play a role in changing the world, but you won't live long enough. Or, you can live a longer life full of more experiences, but you'll be behind other people. Anyways, this girl is being sort of forced by her parents to get the chip. They travel to the implant center. Then it cuts to the president of the company that manufactures these chips. The thing with the chips is that they are very expensive to create. So when people die, they get cleared and recycled. The president gets in the car and the car crashes and he dies. The implant is taken from him, put with a bunch of other chips to be wiped. It gets to the implant center, where a worker mistakes them for the ones that are ready to be implanted. When our main character arrives and is getting the procedure, they put the used chip in. As she's walking out of the office, she hears a girl screaming about not wanting to die young. The girl rounds a corner, sees Ryder, and asks for help quick. They both run out through the emergency exit. That's the bulk of what the shooting would look like. But what was going to happen next was that Ryder started seeing things that she shouldn't have been seeing. They were actually memories from the owner of the company. 
They revealed that the government had been programming the chips to be passive mind control devices. The president of the company at the time was very much loved and supported because during his time in office, there was a significant decrease in terrorism, violence, and crime. This means that the chips were preventing bad behavior in people, but also could mean that they affect decision making in different ways. This all makes sense because the implants store brain cells in them, and it has been proven that there are some brain cells in the heart, and when people get heart transplants, they actually find that they have cravings for the favorite foods of the person who gave them their heart, and yada, yada, yada. Um, I'm getting really deep in the plot now, but you get the point. What I decided to do, since I couldn't follow through with my original project, was to change it. I planned to do a documentary on the thoughts and feelings of a graduating teenager during the pandemic. So, in early March, I started writing little diaries and filming things that I did during the day. I've done all that research about camera angles and filming strategies, and I wanted to make use of it. I have an iPhone 6S, so what I did was I took a piece of duct tape, stuck it to the back of my phone, and put my phone on all sorts of walls, furniture, and even the ceilings. I shot footage of what I did. There wasn't much, but that's the point. I was extremely restricted, so I needed to make do with what I had and turn it into something good. That was the new goal of my capstone. Once I was done shooting, that was when I had the most issues. I had gotten a free trial of Adobe After Effects and learned how to use it, which took me almost two days straight. I practiced editing with it by making a transitional edit of Inception, and this is how that turned out. After Effects is a really, really cool software. But when I wanted to begin the post-production phase of my film and went in to put the music, the clip would be cut off halfway. I couldn't fix it, so I took to Reddit on r slash After Effects to ask someone how to fix it. This guy was very insistent that After Effects is not an editing software, which I guess makes sense because it's called After Effects. So he told me to use Final Cut Pro, so I started editing there, which was fine until I had 20 seconds of clip and then the 121 gigabytes of storage on my MacBook Pro could no longer take the heat and it took a whole minute just to add a clip or transition to the timeline. So I went and I deleted a lot of storage off my Mac and then things worked fine. Erica told me she edits on Premiere Pro, so I might have to try that out next time. I had trouble with was audio. I asked Erica how I should approach audio in my production. She told me about how music with lyrics can be distracting when you're doing a voiceover. So I changed my song. Then I told her about how I was recording with the mic from a headset. She gave me really helpful insight. She told me that sometimes she sits in her closet to record audio because all the clothes get rid of the echo and improve the quality. So I voiced my film in a closet, but try not to think about that while watching. Doing this helped my mic quality sound a lot better and less distracting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the final result now, and then I'm going to do some explaining. The first few weeks weren't too hard, but I realized that right now I should feel happy, excited, and relieved. I should be embracing the last moments I have to spend with the people I grew up with, friends and family. The most unsatisfactory part of this situation is that we all went to school on Friday the 13th, not knowing that it would be our last day as an ordinary youth. Gossiping about the first person in our state who's at the hospital with COVID, making sure not to touch our faces. Pure all on hand, all over the school. Nobody knew that it was going to be so much more than that. It was the last day I opened the school doors. The last day I sat in the chair I've been sitting in for the past four years. I miss when I would feel sleepy at 10 p.m. I miss smelling the spring air on the way home after a long day of school. I long for another time where I can stand up without feeling dizzy. Now I start my day at 12 and eat two meals a day. I'll be attending my graduation in a car and a diploma will be chucked at me through the window or possibly sent in the mail, but nobody has a clue what's happening and hasn't for the past three months. 
It really just does feel like a piece of paper to me now. As the days progress, we've been scared to have another good thing taken from us. First, it was school. I remember when the governor closed all the schools in the state for the rest of the year. It's not like I was expecting to go back to school, but it's astonishing just watching all of my childhood and the people I grew up with slip out of my life without even getting to say goodbye. A small part of me still had hope, but it vanished in seconds. Then it was friends, prom, senior trip, graduation, and now we fear that we won't get to have the wild celebratory summer we've dreamed of for some long time. It's sunny and warm out, and the trees are full and green, but joy is missing. The thing is, you can't get revenge on a virus. You can't fist fight a virus as much as I'd like to. The only thing that most of us can do is sit here and wait for it to be over. But with all this free time, I've had to reevaluate what I value most in life. Before all this, I was so caught up in being scared for my future. Will I be happy? Successful? Will people like me? I never took the time to sit back and appreciate what I really had. When we come back to a normal life, we all need to remember how to live. Have fun, go where your heart guides you, and appreciate nature and friends. So basically, at the beginning of the year, I had a vision in my head of exactly how I wanted my film to look. I wanted it to be 10 minutes long, shot with impeccable quality and with multiple people. But I had to change that. I had to somehow make a film without being able to leave my house and without having access to the professional equipment I needed. The footage in my film was shot over a time span of three months. In the film, you can see how time goes by. The trees become full and green and the clouds of April clear. You can see that I spend a lot of time doing my schoolwork on my laptop in bed. This shows the routine I had established and did for a very long time. You may not have seen it, but I actually implemented a lot of the research I did into my film. Here are some different and unique shots. A close shot. A dolly shot. An extreme close up. A high angle shot. A follow shot. And there are many more. I was restricted from some factors, such as lighting. I do think the quality of my film would have been better if I had used lighting, but I didn't have access to any big lighting sources, such as an umbrella light. Now let's talk about the music more in depth. I didn't want a song that used instruments. I wanted a song that sounded techy to reflect the mood of 2020 and the fact that Generation Z is extremely affiliated with technology. Something I learned about audio and music is that it can drastically affect the mood and feeling of a film. It's not something to be used incorrectly, so you should be careful when you're picking your audio choice. Many things from doing the capstone project. I learned that whatever career I want to pursue, it should be hands-on. I've learned to appreciate all types of films, and I've become less picky when looking for a movie or show to watch. I learned that filmmaking is incredible because you can do anything and bring anything you want to life. Any story, person, or event can be made just how you want it. Film is being revolutionized every year, and there are so many great movies out there waiting to be watched. As I said earlier, I'm grateful that I was able to do the researching and planning part, because in the end, I was able to look further into the meaning of my film and focus more on expressing emotion and feeling rather than focusing on the plot like I would have if the pandemic didn't happen. The research I did taught me that the smallest things, like a higher camera angle, darker tone, and different music can contribute to a greater meaning. In order to produce a film, you have to be extremely organized, dedicated, and creative. I hope that this presentation changed the way you think about movies and productions and allowed you to appreciate filmmaking and everything needed to make a movie come together. 
I will now answer any questions that anyone has, and thank you for coming to watch my presentation. Just want to make sure I stopped it. Um, my gosh, I am just so impressed. That was unbelievable, yeah. Audrey. Uh, absolutely unbelievable. Um, it's really interesting. Um, I just want to make sure I'm still okay. There we go. We're still here. Um, I just want to just mention that I'm just really impressed how you took something that was, I'm sure, very devastating in many different aspects, but you turned it into something that was inspirational. Um, and I hope that you can share that with some people in your senior class, because I think it would reach a lot of people um, that are going through the same thing that you're going through as a senior in high school. Yeah, of course. It's just, I'm just really, just really, really impressed. I, I'm kind of speechless right now. because <laughs> Thank you. Um, We'll open it up to questions um, in the chat feature. We have a few people here. If you'd like to use the Zoom chat feature um, on the bottom, you can ask questions for Audrey or make comments. So looking back, I'm sure the end result wasn't what you expected, but are you happy with the end product and, and what you came up with? Yeah, I'm happy that I was able to do what I could with, like, you know, not being able to leave the house or have other people to, like, hold the camera for me or hold the camera for someone else. Mm -hmm. um, I also wish I could have made it longer, but there wasn't really that much content to film. So, and something I found was that while you're shooting, you, th you think you're getting so much footage, but when you put it in the timeline, you don't get as much footage as you expected. So that's why it was... So it turned out a lot shorter than I expected it to. Now the clip, the, the section that you talked about, the pandemic and your experience, was that the film embedded in your capstone presentation or, or is there a longer version of the film that you made? The film that I was going to make before? No, the film that you made about the pandemic, the part that you showed us, was that the whole thing or was that just part of it? That was the whole thing. I could probably honestly extend it once I'm able to, like, you know, go in the public and see other people. Oh, gosh. No, I wasn't asking you to do that at all. I was, yeah, I was that was the yeah. whole thing. It was, it was awesome. And I loved how you led up to kind of your experiences about it and your experience, you know, with the pandemic and what you were learning about, what you tried to do. Um, it was excellent. I was only asking because if you had a separate um, version of it, I was going to ask you to send it to me just because I'd like to see it. Yeah, um, actually, the if you want to see it, like for the people who are viewing, if you want to see it in better quality since this was streamed and, you know, it didn't come out like perfect quality, uh, the film is called Exploring Filmmaking, a Capstone Project on YouTube, and you can find it and watch it uh, in better form. It was excellent. I. I think it, it came out, on my end, it came out great. Um, I hope everyone else was able to hear it fine, but on my end, it came out great. Um, yeah, there are some questions in the chat, so. Oh, yeah. I didn't see it. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, great job. The plot of your movie sounds amazing. Do you still plan to make the original movie when you have access to what you need? Um... Yeah, I also, I didn't get into, I didn't, I'm not going to a college for film just because their college was perfect for me but didn't have film as a major, but I do plan on still having film as a big hobby of mine. So once I have the actual time and resources to like gain access to a good camera and a good microphone and I get another uh, cast together, um, I'll definitely uh, start to think about making the uh, movie I was originally planning to make. And the next question is, do you enjoy editing music? Did that change how you made your cuts and the emotional arc of your documentary? Actually, so there is a huge difference between the song with lyrics and the song that didn't have lyrics, because the song with lyrics, you know, it kind of narrates it for you. Um, so I originally tried editing my film to a song with lyrics, and I didn't like the way it was turning out, so I decided I should probably use a song without lyrics. Um, it took me actually two hours to find 
the two songs that I picked because it's just such an important choice to make when you're making a movie with music in it. Um, but I really did enjoy editing to music. I think that it uh, gave my film the uh, tone that I wanted it to have. It was extremely professionally done. It was, it was excellent. You can tell the amount of time. I'm sure there was numerous hours spent on it. Um, just with your example of the two hours with the music, I can't imagine how much time total you spent on it. Probably yeah. more than just what's required for a credit capstone project. Um, yeah. Sounds like you learned a lot, um, and I hope you keep doing what you're doing because you're really good at it. Um, and then maybe one day you could you could do that original film that you've hoped for. But I, I really do mean what I said. I, I think this could reach a lot of people who are in the same position as you, and I would encourage you to share it with your peers in your senior class because I think many people are feeling alone right now, and I think it might help. Yeah, I'll have to do that. Yeah, let's see, is there any other questions or final comments? Okay, Audrey, did you have anything else before we sign off? Um, I think that's it. Thank you for streaming it for me. Absolutely. Excellent job. And um, I'm glad that I have a copy of it so that I can, um, I'm going to share it with the counselors in my department, if you don't mind. Um, oh, no problem. Thank you. Interesting to, for them to see that.